Hi everyone, in this video we'll talk about the birthday problem and try to solve it using loops in R. And uh, if you don't know what the birthday problem is, I'll paste a link in the description below. I found this article recently and it, this is a really really good article and this made me thinking as to you know if we can solve this problem in R and can we use simulations to our benefit to do the same. If you want to check this uh, problem mathematically, I'll say go to the blog and read it out. It's very beautifully explained and this you know just helps uh, you know get clarity as to how this problem is being worked but if you want to use your skills in R to understand how this is happening and you want to run loops and simulations to see it does this work on any number of people in a room then you can use this code that I'm about to go with with that let's jump into the video first we'll just clear the environment using RM which is equal to LS and control L to clear the console then I think we'll move forward by creating a function to create a function, we'll first set the seed. Seed is generally set to make sure that randomization can be controlled. Right? So we'll set the seed. We'll set the number of people in a room to 30. So n is equal to 30. That means in one room, there are 30 people. We'll set the match counter to be 0. right? And then we'll start a simulation. So what I have done up until now, I'll just explain in simple terms. There's a room of 30 people what is the probability that at least two of them share a birthday that's the birthday problem blogs on internet or you know the uh, very uh, widely accepted answer that you will hear about or read about is in a group of 23 people there's a 50 percent chance that two of the people in those 23 people will share a birthday how did that 50 percent come about what's the mathematical nuance to it follow the follow the article in the in the description but if you want to see how can we simulate it and see okay for 23 people this is the uh, you know percentage but for 30 people for 60 people for 70 people for 100 people what is the percentage then right so to do that we'll just not use one room in one room there can be 30 people but what if there are 10,000 rooms each room having 30 people and each room each person having a different birthday and then we see are there any people with the same birthdays in that room, right? So ignore the for loop for now. Just look at row number 26. We sample, we use the sample command. The crux is that you can sample numbers one through 365. We're assuming it's not a leap year. So each day is numbered one through 365 and you can be born on any one of those days, right? And the size is N, which I can control via setting N. So size is 30, there are 30 people I'll randomize 1 to 365 among those 30 people and they can have the same birthday as well. Right? The randomization can occur at any point. This is how I get the birthdays. Okay. So if I just run this right now, you'll see I have birthdays created. Right? Now, if length of unique birthdays, like let's say there are 30 people, each person has a unique birthday. Cool then unique birthdays will be 30 out of 30, right? Because if 30 people, everybody has a different birthday, then they then every birthday will be unique. All good. If length, length meaning how many, how many of them are there? Like what is the length of unique birthdays? Is it 30, is it 29, is it 31, is it 28? Of course, 31 cannot happen. But is it 30 or less than 30? Now, this checks if length of unique birthdays is less than 30, less than N. That means that there are at least two people in that group of 30 who have the same birthday right that's how it works and if that happens i'll just update the match counter to match plus one right why have i done this match counter of zero and then adding plus one to it it is because i am running this simulation for ten thousand rooms and not just for one room if i was running it for one room then i would just run this set up and then see whether my match is giving me an answer match gives me one that means there is someone who has the same birthday in it right but if i have to run it for ten thousand times right then how will this happen so i run the entire code now that i've explained through each and every line what's happening in it if you look at the for loop it's very simple you just read for i in one to ten thousand replicate whatever's following in the for command for 10,000 times and n I have already declared what's n and the match counter is 0 when I start the code right so if the first room the match happens it will be 0 plus 1 if the second room match does not happen 
this if command will be false and won't happen to take place then for will go again again and again so i run this entire chunk and it's done and now we'll be evaluating the probabilities since we ran it for 10000 rooms and we have the match counter how many times did the birthdays match we should ideally divide the count that we have in match with 10000 right and then we should get we will get the probability of match how many times did the birthday like at least two people have the same birthdays right and i'll run this and boom i get 70 7 there's a 70 percent chance if you're in a room of 30 people that two of you will share a birthday now in the white text or in a white scenario or online we can we know that in a room of 23 that there's a 50 percent chance let's test that and see if our simulation gives us the same number so i'll run the simulation again with n is equal to 23 and i'll evaluate the probabilities oh and i get 50.26 percentage one bonus thing that r has which i didn't know when i read this article is that r has an inbuilt function called t birthday which is built around this very same birthday problem so you don't actually have to create a function to run a simulation uh, to check what is the number of people uh, you know to get a certain probability you can just call the p birthday function and check if there are 50 people in a room what's the probability that at least two of them share a birthday it's 97 percent let's say i run it for 23 just like we ran it above and it's 50.72 so this just gives us you know something like when we ran our uh, answer was 50.26 percentage but in actually it's 50.72 Right, so we were pretty close, and this is only because our simulations ended at 10,000. If we would have increased, that would have certainly helped out. But yeah, this p birthday function is very, very cool, and you can actually, you know, use it to understand okay, like if there are 10 people in a room, what's the probability that at least two of them share a birthday? It's a measly 11.7%. So you cannot really bet that any two of them have the same birthday. But if you are in a room with 30 people and there's a 70 percent 71 percent chance in fact to for two people to have the same birthday you can actually you know say uh, you can actually just bet at random like i assume that at least two of them have the same birthday and you know people will be surprised at how do you know that stat so yeah that's fun if you want to see if you want to plot the probabilities you can use the small chunk at the bottom where we increase the room size from 1 through 50 to see how the probability curve goes up uh, you can just, uh, you know, create a variable of room size, 1 through 50, and then use the sapply function to match the probabilities using the p-birthday function. So this will, have, so what this function sapply will do, it will take every number in room size, 1 through 50, loop that in p-birthday function, like first it will run p-birthday 1, then p-birthday, first will run p-birthday 1, then p-birthday 2, then 3, and then so on, it will go till 50. And then it will record the percentage and plot it in a graph. And then, of course, we'll use the plot command to use this. This is my y-axis, matching probabilities. This is my room size. This is nothing you can just, you know, try it on your end to understand how this is working. And once that is done, you can plot the probabilities and, you know, just see it on your end. So here's the uh, graph that we have. And you can see once we get 40 people in a room, the probability exceeds 80% for two people to share a birthday. So that's some cool stuff in our... Uh, I came across this and I wanted to share. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.